can you shed any light, uh, uh, Jeff, on how this began and uh, and ultimately came to fruition, and also how you envision a player like this uh, coming in and impacting your group? Um, sure. Uh, I mean, I would say that uh, you know we've had a number of conversations over the last uh, let's say few weeks uh, with Winnipeg about uh, uh, some players, and, and Jacob's name came up, and uh, you know obviously he's a player that. Uh, that we would covet, and, and uh, I think most teams would, and what he what he can do and provide for you, which is which is a lot, right? He's a big he's a big defenseman. He's 25 years old. He can play against the best players. He has offense. He can kill Pally. So um, he's in the prime of his career. So uh, you know the opportunity for a player like that to become available it doesn't happen all the time. And uh, you know we jumped on it and had conversations that led to this. And uh, you know here we are, but. Uh, uh, what was the second part of that, Michael? No, that that was it. How it how it came to fruition and, and how you see him yeah. stepping in and and, and making it. Yeah, an I mean, I, I think I think stepping in is fairly obvious. You know, he's going to come here. He's, he's going to play big minutes, and uh, you know, he's he's a pretty versatile guy. So, you know, we can envision him, you know, playing in all scenarios and being a big part of it. Have you had any conversations with Jacob or, or his rep or, and? and or I guess what I'm saying. Um, is I, yeah, yeah. I spoke to Jacob after the trade uh, to welcome him. Uh, he's obviously pretty excited. Uh, I think it's going to be a good fit. I think both of us feel that way. All of us do. And uh, uh, as far as his agent, I talked to Kurt after the trade as well. And uh, you know, we agreed to talk over the next couple of days. So do you have a, do you have a ballpark in mind, like what it's going to take to, to get him signed? I mean, I do. Uh, I, I wouldn't share it with you, but I, I uh, you know, I have a, I have an idea of what I think it will take. But you know, it's it's my ballpark. I haven't talked to those guys uh, about numbers, um, but you know, we've done our research to to factor in what we think it might be, and and uh, you know, what a player like that's worth. So uh, you know, we'll move forward like that with you know complete confidence that that we can get a deal done. And just to follow up that, um, would this make it any more likely that you might um, use a buyout. Um, you know, Carpy, it's a good question. I haven't thought too much about it right now. Um, I would say, you know, you know, I don't have an answer right now. If you if you ask me closer to the draft, I'm sure you'll be out there. Then we can maybe answer it better. Quickly, just we've talked a lot about the rebuild through these last couple of years. How, how key is this trade in terms of just accelerating the rebuild, acquiring such a, an elite player? Yeah, I think it's I think it's big. I mean, when we're when we're out there trying to improve the team, we're looking, you know, for players that will fit into what we're doing, and and the age is a big part of it. Obviously, they have to be good players, but you know, the age of 25, you know, really coming to his prime, um, and the amount, the, the different amount of things that that Jacob can provide for us, I think it it helps us a lot. You know, does it accelerate it? Well, we'll see. Um, but we're certainly getting a really good player that, uh, you know, we've coveted for a while. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's exciting. And I, I think it uh, it fits with what we're doing. And, I, and um, you know, we'll see where it takes us. You know, you, you've spent two trade deadlines and a little bit of acquiring first-round draft picks. And now you you move one of them to get a player who obviously fits right in for you and what, you, what you're looking to do. And I guess my question is, do you see this, and I don't expect you to, like, give me all the answers, but do you see this as the first of several moves this off season to, to, to beef up this roster, to make this team playoff competitive next year? Is that sort of the, the window you're working in now after the rebuild for a while here? Um, I, mean, it's, I guess that's one way to look at it. Uh, you know, listen, we, we have all these first round picks and, and we've talked a lot about, you know, do we make all the picks? Do we use them to acquire players that that'll be around for what we're trying to do? Uh, so this is, you know, an opportunity where we felt like, you know, we we we've had some luck on our side to get to number two. Um, we have other picks. We have two two still, um, and just you know, just felt like this is a player that's going to be with us for a while through it all. So, you know, that's you know the biggest reason why I, I, we felt comfortable. You know, moving off number twenty there. Um, as far as more moves coming, yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. 
I hope there's more things out there. You know, there's a lot of talk. Um, there's a you know, there's a lot of different names out there. There's a lot of ways to improve your team. Um, you know, we're we're excited as we head to Vancouver tomorrow and, and see what uh, you know what what lies ahead really. And can I ask you a follow just to, it, with uh, yeah. anything that you have um, with Chris Kreider? Is, is, have you been in touch? Is there any? Um, do you have a feel one way or the other uh, on Kreider at this point as you're planning to get to Vancouver soon? Um, not really. I have had conversations uh, with Matt Cater. We've had uh, a couple uh, short conversations just to talk about uh, you know what we're thinking and and uh, when we should talk. So um, you know I'll keep that private, but you know we'll we'll continue to talk and uh, and see how that progresses and, and let you know as it evolves. When, when you're able to make a move like this, where in theory you're going to be able to, to spend or commit a lot of money on a salary cap, and you know there's a lot of talk out there and free agencies opening, how much of a commodity is having salary cap space to be able to spend this summer, given how many teams are up against the cap and looking to potentially trade assets to get rid of some salary? Well, I think it's it's really important. Uh, I think what we've learned over the last few years since we started on this rebuild is, you know, having, having cap space uh, – afford you conversations you couldn't have before. And uh, you know, now I think we're in conversations and we're talking to teams about things that, you know, maybe you know, three or four years ago we weren't able to, to do. So um, it, it uh, there's a lot of different avenues to, to do this and uh, there's a lot of conversations that go into it and as far as eating money or spending money or, or what, what you have to do. But definitely having cap space is, is, a, big, is a big thing to do, you know, is, is, it's a big weapon to have as we move forward in our rebuild. It's a, Thank it's you. a lot of different looks. Yeah. Does this move, how important was making this move at this time before the draft, before free agency, to let you guys put your strategy in place heading into those events? Uh, I think it's a good point. It's, it, it helps. You know, as we, you know, there's a lot of things we're looking at and want to do and, and look into, and, and uh, certainly this is a, you know, a big one. And, uh, Sort of set the tone, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it adds a really nice player to what we're trying to do. We want to. We, one of the things is we head into the summer. We want to do is improve our defense, and we feel like we've done that today. Uh, as we head into the draft and, and free agency, there's some other areas and different things we want to look at too. So, but I, I do think it's a it's a good tone setter, and, and uh, you know, we feel fortunate. Starting at the deadline, we've talked to you. You've talked about the flexibility that you would have going into this summer, the position you were in with, with all the picks to ch- choose what you wanted to do with them. Since the night of the lottery, obviously you've, you've spent a couple of them on Fox and now Truba. How, if in any way, did moving up in that lottery affect your outlook or your approach in the sense of, of using the assets you have in the way you have so far? Uh, I mean, I, I think it does have a positive effect on – you know, obviously when you're going to the lottery and you start off at six, you don't know what could be there, and now we're at two. And, and you know, the opportunity to get a, a special player is there for us uh, and somebody that could walk into our lineup and contribute right away and, and have a significant impact. So it, it definitely plays into it. Uh, you know, if we were still picking six, and uh, would we have still done this deal? You know, probably we would have. I mean, I think that... Uh, like I said, this is a player that right side that can do so much for you. Uh, I think it's an opportunity we, we just felt like we had to take. 